My name is Jared Gross. I'm here in Austin, Texas at the site of Icon's four new 3D printed houses developed by Three Strands. We're going to take a walk around the four buildings with CEO Jason Ballard. In a previous video, we saw a time lapse of how these homes were printed. In this video, we're going to talk about the interior details of the home along with the reasoning behind some of the construction decisions made. We'll touch on how to submit a project you'd like printed, and finally, how to apply for a job at Icon. If you enjoy this video, make sure to drop a like and subscribe so that you don't miss a 3D printed construction update in the future. I'm Jason Ballard, the CEO and co-founder of Icon, and we're here today at our 17th Street project, which is our first uh, foray into mainstream American housing. These are the first houses for sale uh, in America that have been 3D printed, and they'll be the first houses uh, to sell and to have a mortgage. So we're very excited about this project. But right here I'm standing in front of the back house, the, the first one that went up for sale. It's called the Garden House. Uh, right here is a little rounded uh, accent wall leading into the entryway. Of course, one of the cool things about 3D printing is the ability to introduce more organic forms into the architecture without increasing cost. So a lot of these features are typically considered to be more expensive, luxurious, more high-end. Um, but of course for a 3D printer, a curve or a slope is just as easy as a straight plumb line. So this is a fun little wall detail because it shows uh, several things that we've been working on all at once. One is you can see the foam insulation inside the wall. So when we print the wall, we've worked really hard on designing a wall system that actually very close to eliminates thermal bridging altogether and then additionally adds incredible insulation value. So you can see the insulation in the wall here. The other thing you can see here is we're beginning to in place the conduit for electrical and plumbing during the print, in the print. So like rough out plumbing and electrical is already done when the print is complete. And you can see that here, and that's been very successful. Uh, areas that we expect to be very intensive with regard to remodeling, perhaps those areas the utilities get put into a traditional stud wall or in a way that's easier to access, and I'll show you that now. So in the way that we construct houses, we have chosen very intentionally to work with a highly resilient material like concrete because we hope part of the solution to a lot of the housing challenges we face will be treating homes more permanently and less disposably, uh, right, sort of purposely dining, designing for resilience. We think this is good for housing affordability. We think it's good for sustainability. But of course, there are trade-offs. Um, concrete is hard to remodel with. It's, you know, it's much harder to cut into uh, than like wood or something like that. And so as we've designed these houses, we've tried to think about what are the parts of the home that are likely to have a faster turnover. Uh, and of course, the answer to that question is kitchen and bath. And so. Uh, something else we were experimenting with in this particular project is printing everything except the kitchen walls, right, so that as kitchen remodels happen over the year, it's a little more easy, it's a little less disruptive to the home. And so um, this wall you can see here, it's got a lot of the plumbing and the kind of things you're going to need in a kitchen or bath setup so that when those remodels inevitably happen over the life of the home, because we hope these homes last for a hundred or longer years, um, it's not disruptive to the, to the core structure of the home. So that's the idea. So here's one of our window details. Um, the way we're doing windows on this project is we you know, continue to print as per usual. Um, and then when, when the window gets to the lintel height, we place the lintel during the print so they're able to operate continuously. Uh, and then also this little bottom sill uh, was formed up and poured during the print as well out of the actual lava creek that we used to print with. The micro fractures on the wall. Yeah. Can we talk about that? Oh, well, yeah. So right here you see a thing that still happens from time to time. We've eliminated it a lot relative to some of our earlier prints. This is called plastic shrinkage. This happens when concrete shifts from its fresh property, extrudable form, uh, and as it moves toward its cured and solid form, as the water evaporates in certain areas where like stresses and rapid evaporation combine, you get this thing called plastic shrinkage and it creates this like mi micro cracking. Uh, it isn't structural, it's cosmetic, and so this um, completely disappears once we like paint and you know uh, trim out the house. So you know, concrete is very strong in compression, and so um, the, uh, the sort of vertical forces on the house are like very well taken care of by printing with a, a material like concrete. Uh, we do have to do some things during the build to add additional strength and tension, and what we do is we print in the wall system itself um, basically little like columns uh, that at the end you can see up there. There's a coil rod coming out of the top. So what happens is after the print is done, the coil rod goes down and anchors the entire house into the foundation. We fill it with more lava creek, put the top plate on, sort of are like bolting the entire house down. And that supports the lateral attentional forces um, that happen uh, in the life of a house. 
so we're up here on the second story of these houses. The, the other interesting thing we did on this project is, aside from being our first chance to, to build a mainstream American house, to list it on the open market, to get a mortgage on it, all that stuff, it was also a way for us to begin experimenting with two stories. Uh, we very much think that two-story printing is in our future, and we wanted to make sure that the 3D printed portion of the wall system is engineered, designed, and capable of supporting uh, two-story structures, passing code, getting the sign-off of structural engineers, those kinds of things. And so you can see here, the second story in this particular project is framed out more traditionally. Um, however, we are very much committed to high-performance homes at ICON, and so we needed the energy performance of the second story to be at least as good as the energy performance of our 3D printed wall, which means we've kind of had to upgrade to at least two by six framing to get that extra insulation. Otherwise, you have a really incredibly performing first floor and the second, you know, all your energy losses and, and kind of lack of performance would be on the more traditionally framed section. So we've upgraded a little bit here and we think the result will be a very cool aesthetic and architectural house, but also a very high performing energy efficient uh, home that's very comfortable for the operators uh, and you know the way we ought to be building homes. So when this is all done, you know when the when the the second story is all finished out and the first floor is all trimmed out and dressed out, before we sell the home or allow somebody to move in, the last thing that we'll do is do a blower door test uh, to confirm that the house is as tight and sealed and uh, energy efficient as we expect and hope it to be. So of course on the portions of the house that are uh, you know, framed out more traditionally, we still expect them to be very, very high performing. And so considering things, not just like the insulation that I talked about earlier, but also the moisture performance of the home, especially on sides of the house. This is the north side of the house and in this part of Texas, weather systems frequently come in from the north. Uh, these are where like prevailing winds come from, especially during bad weather. And so doing things like adding this like water and ice protection um, and then sort of also some, this is kind of a, a double product that offers water and ice protection and offers also some radiant barrier. And so this is all about uh, doing everything we can do. The, any house that we build um, needs to be built according to the like very highest performance standards. And one of the more exciting things about this business icon has been how enthusiastic the world has been about uh, 3D printed houses. I get more emails and social media messages than I can even begin to explain from people who want their own 3D printed houses, they want access to 3D printers. Uh, it's very exciting as an entrepreneur but it's also very heartbreaking at times because it just shows you how profound the problem really is. Uh, to date we've only had a very small handful of printers um, and so we've only been able to say yes to a very few opportunities despite sort of in our heart what we want to do is to to do this for as many people as possible. That said we are just now beginning early stage manufacturing and we are bringing on a kind of customer support and business development team because we want to be able to say yes to more opportunities. And so if you think you have a project that's a good fit for 3D printing, I'm not promising we'll be able to say yes today, but we would love to hear from you. Go to our website at iconbuild.com. You'll find your way to, uh, to the portion that says, you know, tell us about a project you need. Um, and we'll do our best to get in contact with you. Um, please be patient. We still only have a small team doing this and we receive thousands and thousands of requests every month. So we'll do our very best to get in touch with you, but we do want to hear what the world wants from this product. So even, even if we can't say yes, just knowing the kind of thing that you might want helps us design our houses and our technology to serve the world. And that's, that's really what ICON's all about. We're advanced construction technologies in the service of humanity. You're also studying right now for a master's degree in space. Yeah, I have like a, a funny background that led me here. I studied conservation biology in undergrad. Uh, through conservation biology, got involved in sustainable building because the built environment is the number one contributor to a lot of our environmental issues. And then also uh, graduate studies in space resources at the Colorado School of Mines. So I inhabit this very strange Venn diagram overlap of construction, technology, and space. Uh, there's not a lot of people maybe who live in that Venn diagram, but I do. Uh, and the fun thing is uh, ICON does as well. You know, th this technology of course has application uh, to solve some of the most important problems on Earth namely housing, but also to open up some of the most exciting opportunities uh, that humanity's ever looked at, which is like becoming a spacefaring civilization uh, in the future. So uh, I definitely almost sprint into work every morning uh, because I don't know any other place that you could get to work on these kinds of things. 
How do you balance your workload as a student versus your workload raising millions of dollars for Icon? Yeah, so the, the CEO graduate student work-life balance is a tricky one. The, the answer is Icon always comes first right now. Um, and I take kind of like one class at a time. So in the graduate program, it's fun. I've, I've sort of had a few cohorts uh, come through while I've been working on my studies. Uh, I've only had to take one semester off, but it's, it's I'm kind of like the old man in the program now. Uh, I think I'll graduate uh, in like nine months. So almost there. Cool. So one of the coolest things about 3D printed houses is not just that um, it's faster, it's automated and these kinds of things. The material itself is a much better building material when it comes to like creating homes that support human well-being and comfort, if that makes sense. So wood, for instance, it wants to rot. It wants to catch fire. It actually, it wants to conduct heat. Wood's a, a pretty good conductor, which is why we have to do all that work to insulate against wood. With a material like concrete, it's naturally pest resistant, it's naturally mold resistant, naturally water resistant, naturally strong, uh, but it also has like a very high thermal massing performance. It absorbs a lot of heat before it starts transmitting it. It isn't exactly R value, which is like pure insulation thermal mass and insulation value are slightly different. And so we've done the one-two punch of like high thermal mass with the concrete, a foam insulation inside so that overall you get walls that like without any upgrading approaching passive house levels of performance because you have high thermal mass, high insulated values. And so we you know sort of you might expect me to say this is the CEO, but we think 3D printed houses are not just sort of faster, cheaper, but you're like making some compromises on aesthetics or performance. These houses are expected to be better in every way. We are designing them to that end. Um, and we believe that the future of housing is not just automated and um, you know delivered by robots, but the future of housing is actually higher performing. And we want these houses to be built in accordance with like our very highest values as people. What things are you looking forward to with the economies of scale at ICON? So the biggest things that, that, that as we graduate from building like homes by the dozen to homes by the hundreds and thousands, and that is coming very soon, uh, so stay tuned, is the ability to radically drive down costs. Because some, some of the costs we're able to drive down, of course, um, just by automating certain things. Uh, but there's still a lot of things that aren't automated or aren't 3D printed, or even the, the lava creed as we like batch and mix it. Being able to buy in larger and larger volumes will allow us to get the natural economies of scale that will drive down pricing. And then also, this really was a technology designed for scale to address a problem at scale. So a lot of what we've done so far in the early days is build like one house here, four houses there, 10 houses there. And that's cool and it's exciting and we'll probably continue to do that work. But you know, there's a transport cost to the printer to get it to site, there's some time to set it up, uh, typically about a day before you even start printing. And if you have to like, burden uh, all of that cost and expense and time onto one house, uh, you're not going to reach sort of the radical improvements that we think need to happen in housing. But if you ship a, a printer to a site or ship five printers to a site, even better, if those printers are then there for a while, they're building a hundred houses, uh, you really start to see the profound effects uh, of what automating uh, the construction of houses at large scale can be. And so we think our romantic idea at ICON is house price houses delivered in half the time. We are not there yet, um, but the way that we're going to get there is by tackling these problems on scale. With the track system the printer runs on the Vulcan 2, hypothetically the track could be as long as you want in one axis. Yep. What's the longest track you've had? So the longest track we've printed on so far is right at about 70 feet. Uh, we used that on a project out at Community First Village here in Austin where we printed three houses at a time uh, that were, are, are now being used to, to shelter folks who were previously experiencing homelessness. Uh, we have some projects coming up here pretty soon where we're going to be going over 100 feet in the tracks. Uh, and so experimenting with how long and how big we can print. Uh, sort of every project we do, I hope as you've seen on this project, we try to introduce new things, innovate in new ways, because there's a, a long list of things that still need to be done uh, to transition the world from more conventional approaches to building to building of the future, which we believe is automated, we believe it's digital, and we believe it's actually going to be more affordable, higher speed, and produce a better product at the end. How perfectly flat do the tracks need to be along the length? You know, the, the tracks themselves need to be like quite flat so the printer needs, can orient itself in three-dimensional space. And so we've, 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 we've got little jacks and things built into the Y-axis tracks. Um, and then also we often will bolt those tracks to the side of the foundation, which of course already has to be flat and level. 
Uh, and so that's the way we're achieving the leveling right now, a combination of like manipulating the tracks to be level uh, and then keying off the foundation itself. So that's how we've done it so far. I believe in the future we'll be doing some more work in this area uh, so that the machine itself can, can do uh, its own sort of sensing and deciding where it is in three-dimensional space. So. so the Vulcan 2's print height only goes up to one floor, correct? Yep, so presently the Vulcan uh, is designed to be a, a single story, uh, a printer for single story structures. Uh, the current version of the technology prints walls up to about eight feet. We have a new version of the technology that's gonna be coming out in the next month or so that prints walls to about 12 feet. We are also hiring, we're growing almost every team you can think of, mechanical engineers, mechatronics, control systems, software, material science, field operations, uh, you name it, we are hiring. Uh, I think we'll triple the size of the company this year. And so uh, if you're interested in the job at Icon, go to our website, iconbuild.com, uh, go to the employment section, you'll see the, all, all the open jobs. Uh, we are looking for elite, diverse, adaptable people to help us do one of the most important things that can be done in the world right now, and that's help humanity find a way to shelter itself that is dignified and that doesn't undermine the ecological well-being uh, of the planet we live on. It was a true pleasure checking out this brand new project by Icon. Special thanks to Jason Ballard for giving me a tour and Brooke Bagus, the head of PR at Icon, who set up this meeting. Earlier in this video, you may have noticed this footage of the Vulcan 2 printer. It's printing a launch pad for use of a rocket intended for space. Off camera, Brooke was explaining to me that Icon has four main categories they're focused on. One being social projects or nonprofit housing. The next being for-profit market rate housing. The third is Department of Defense contracts for the military and the fourth is space applications, sometimes in collaboration with NASA. We don't get to see much of the work they do with the Department of Defense, but from what we do get to see, there's a lot of exciting stuff going on and certainly no sign of slowing down. If ICON gets their way, there's no question 3D printed construction is going to the moon.